Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to take a minute and we are going to go over. I'm going to show you some of the tools and the components you're going to need for uh, making arrows, that sort of stuff, and uh, your archery supplies kind of things. And uh, so I have it here. Now this is actually, I just opened it for the intro of this, but uh, but basically I used to keep everything in a drawer like that. This is my, my war room here, my kind of my office and my hunt and storage stuff and, you know, kind of my, my tucked away little corner of the world here that we keep the door shut and nobody comes into my little hidden hidden element hidden room kind of thing but we have um like i said used to keep everything in that dresser in the garage back when i lived in michigan here i get downsized a little bit i shoot the same arrows all the time these arrows that we got right here i mean i i've been shooting these for so long um for about 10 years now that i kind of don't i don't they work on every one of my bows because my bows are all same weight bows so it's not like i have to change they are all basically 57 pounds of 26 57 at 26 57 at 26 uh so it's not like i i change a lot of stuff around so but basically this here is my chest for a lot of my archery making stuff let's kind of go through it and see here but we got broadheads in here um, you know, tons and tons, tons of broadheads. I mean, you can see we got more broadheads than we know what to do with. Um, you know, I got all my razor ones are on my three or four dozen arrows I have set. So I don't have a ton more of the actual razors that I currently shoot, but, uh, we got tons of a boyers. We got tons of, you know, I got, I got so many heads. I don't even know what to do with all of them. Um, so it's good to have broadheads are good to have. And so we got tons and tons of broadheads. But you're going to want broadheads, obviously. You're going to need heads that you're going to use. Um, but I keep a drawer. This drawer is basically just for broadheads. And then in here we have all of our insert stuff. These are 100 grain, 125 grains in the bottom underneath here. Right here. Under, or those are 75 grain. You know, it's good to have different size adapters. These are all my aluminum adapters. And there's some 125 grains under those. Uh, but I keep all this stuff kind of organized here in a way that it's all easy access to be able to use these are my tools i need files like i always got tons of broadhead files knock pliers uh razor blades markers you know just things that you're gonna need um in here all my judos are here i got uh different weights of field tips all different sizes of field tips in here it's good to have this is actually my daughter gave me this and this is pretty awesome um this is actually a glue container and i don't know if these will even fit in there yet i haven't tried but they are designed uh no it's not gonna of course it's not um but it's designed to keep your glues from drying out she gave me that i thought that was pretty cool but here's where i keep all of my uh you know all of my inserts my glues my uh, cause you're going to need some flex tight glues. You're going to need, uh, glue, uh, hot melt glues. If you're doing hot melt, these are the specific nails I use when I make my custom inserts, uh, which I have one here. I'll show you. And those are the punches. So that's kind of my, my custom stuff for that. But when we look at this, see my inserts, I use these brass inserts and I create an insert like that. That is my 200 grain custom made insert. I take two of these and I grind the head off of one put them back to back like this with the head grinded off use those finishing nails it like this and uh cut that short and I basically glue it together and I create this right here is what I make now they do make uh 200 grain actual brass inserts I have not tried these yet I got these on Amazon uh I'm not sure how good I'm not sure if I'm gonna like them or not but I did buy them to try but you can see they're actually a little bit shorter and they got a little less they're actually about the same when you think about it from head size so I may experiment with them I'm not sure but I got so many of these I keep making these uh you know these this double long insert like this and i've been shooting it for so many years that it works perfect so uh but it's good to have this kind of stuff in here your little tools and uh goodies like i said that glue thing i thought would be pretty cool for that but they don't fit those this is the glue i use for my inserts i glue my inserts into my arrows with this glue i've been doing it for about a, about 10 years it's always been my favorite i use fletch tight premium this stuff right here, the platinum, is what I use to glue all my feathers on. And I use hot melt glue, like you're seeing here, boning hot melt. Uh, yeah, boning feral tight hot melt is what I use for uh, gluing my broadheads onto 
uh, all of these, you know, taking my tips, broadheads or judos, and gluing them onto my insert adapters like these. That's all done with hot melt. Same with the broadheads. I already showed you that one. Uh, this is more glues here. So I got some, but the problem is, see this one, this is junk. It, it, they harden up on you after a while. So I'm going to start keeping them in a Ziploc bag. They didn't do that to me in Michigan, but they're doing it to me down here. I don't know if it's the humidity or what, but both of those are junk now. But here I got all of my knocks. I, I use regular gold tip knocks. And I have all my string knocks right here. Extra knocks back there, different head glue heads. These are all leather pieces that I can use for making my uh, shelves and uh uh, my strike plates and things like that that I've just accumulated over the years I keep in there we come down here lower here we have all my string making stuff I shoot Dacron I use b55 Dacron okay this is what I'm mostly using and, and very confident and comfortable with this is fast flight plus right there whereas uh, here's uh, like here's b55 this is what I make my strings out of um, so I got a bunch of Dacron, a bunch of Fast Flight, a bunch of different servings. Uh, I have a bunch of different serving tools in here, uh, you know, that we can use. I like this style better than I do this style. This one here being my main one that I use the most right there. Uh, I'll put links to some of this stuff down below for you. But, uh, but serving tools from this is my string making, um, you know, all my... All my stuff in here, waxes, everything I need is in this. Right here, like I said, a big consolidation factor. Here is where I keep all my strings and extra bow square, uh, my cat whisker materials. I keep my rubber hammer in here that I use for when I'm chopping feathers. So that stays in here. Again, it's just all kind of organized, but this is all strings right here that are already pre-made that I made. Strings for my bows. I label what they are. Uh, I have all my arrow wraps right here like this and i have a spin tester right there that's what i actually use to fletch my or to put my rings on when i put my air or when i put my cresting rings on here i set this on here and i lean it against a wall like that and i set it on there it's without a tip because the tip's too heavy but i'll put that on here like this and as i spin it and it spins, I hold a marker right there, and I put that on. That's how I crest mine. So, uh, obviously, it's not the best way, but it gets the job done for me. So, just a simple little easy. But this is just spare stuff right there. Mouse pad comes in real handy for putting on your arrow wraps. Okay, lay them on a, on a mouse pad. You don't get any bubbles in them that way. Works really good. So, put this stuff back in here. Again, not the... You know, I'm I'm in a I've downsized size to a much smaller house, tremendously smaller house. So everything has got to be uh, scaled down size wise here. Um, this is where I keep all of my spare parts for my quivers, my Great Northern quivers, all of my jigs. I've been using now. There's great jigs like Bits and Burger stuff like that. I have been using these these Jojen Mono Fletchers uh, for 30 years. I love these. Okay, somebody sent me, I can't remember who it was, but sent me this, uh, found it and then sent me one. Uh, but this is what I use. I've been, like I said, I've been using them for many years. I love them. I got a few of them in here and different clamps. And so that's my setup that I use for fletching. Like I said, been doing it that way for 30 years. Uh, I don't think they even make these anymore, but the Bits and Burger models, things like that are great. You will need a scale, an arrow scale. Okay, it doesn't matter who makes them. Three Rivers one is good. This one I got on Amazon and I absolutely love it. It is simple. It is functional. And uh, this thing just straight up rocks. So we take this, pop it open. It comes with its own weight. Let me throw this crap out of the way here because we're cleaning house as we go. But so this arrow scale here and you are going to, where's my on button? I can't see the little thing right there. Turn that on. And you just take your arrow, and you set your arrow on there, and balance it. Come on, see if I can keep it from rolling. There we go, 710 grain, arrow right there, 711 grains. So that's how, you know, just so simple uh, to do that. But I can also then check with my point weights, if I'm taking something like this, and I want to know with uh, an insert, 
Well, which insert is this one? Which one is that? Is that a 36 grain or a 42 grain? That's a 42 grain. Now I know. Uh, which steel one is this one? Is this, uh, that's hollow. Is that 100 grain or 75 grain? I know it's 100 grain, but we can put it on there and see and verify that. So just very handy to have a actual uh, grain scale. This one's got its own set weight in there. Again, I'll put links to this below, but these things are very, very valuable to have. Um, I'll put that stuff away in a minute. But so that's very good. This drawer here, this is all my different feathers. Okay, these are all just feathers. I buy full length feathers like this right here so that I can then chop them myself and I can get more feathers out of them. So uh, I will show you an example here in a minute, but I keep all my feathers. I only shoot white and I shoot green and that's it. So that's all I have to have in there. And I got, I got some orange ones that my son wanted for his. We got some reflective wraps here, which are kind of cool if you want to put those on there to help find them at night. But this is all of my feathers in that drawer right there. And then down here, we have more parts for a Great Northern Quiver. Okay, I, I never have enough of this stuff in here. So we got spare parts. This is actually a taper tool for tapering wood shafts. Uh, more spare parts for that stuff in here. Uh, some other older inserts, some things that I don't use. Like these are little, I'll, I'll never use these again, probably, but I have them in case I need them. So just a bunch of little, this is a lot of little spare pieces and parts of stuff that we have down here. Uh, some suede if I want to use it, some old knocks, some old inserts, uh, you know, that kind of stuff that just comes when you buy the arrows that, I'll, like I said, I'll never ever actually personally use, probably ever. But I just keep all that stuff as a, as a spare junk drawer down here. Down here we have yarns, just it's what I make my string silencers out of. Just uh, two different simple yarns. And here we have all my chopping blocks. Okay, these are for arrow chopping. Lay your arrow or your feather on there, fold it over, hit it with that rubber hammer that I showed you that was buried in there. Pop, the feather comes right out. You're good to go. So I have all my choppers in here. Uh, five and a half inch or four inch. And I think this is another four, right? Is this another four? No, this is a five and a half inch high back also. Um, that's what that is too. Five and a half inch high back and then the four inch right here. So uh, just my choppers and simple stuff like that. So that pretty much wraps up the ones, the things that we have inside here. Now we got to kind of run out to the garage and show you some of the other stuff in there that you may want to have eventually too. Uh, let's do that. Pop out there. Let's leave this door open. It's beautiful out. It's the nice thing about January in Georgia. It's uh, 76 degrees today. We're going to go out. Me and Tina are going to go out on a boat here in just a little bit. Uh, as soon as she gets back from the doctor, she's at a doctor's visit with Bella uh, for the baby. And then, uh, But we are taking that boat, and we are going to run out and hit the rivers and go do some stuff in just a little bit and uh, get out and just enjoy and explore some new places. But we go back here into the garage or shed, as you call it, whatever way you want to think about it. Like I said, it's been nice downsizing and uh, everything I have is now paid for and I get to spend a lot, you know, a lot less time making money and a lot more time uh, enjoying the outdoors. So we come into here and we have a couple things here that we're going to need too. All right, we have a string making jig. If you are going to make your own strings, you will want a jig that you can use to be able to make it. I've been using this jig now for 30 years. Okay, it's old. It's been a beat up, but they still sell the same exact one today. I have it set for all my increments, uh, what sizes I need for what on there, and uh, you just take your post, put it in there, you start wrapping your strings. I have videos on this. If you research uh, string or making strings on my channel, you will find some incredible videos on it. And an arrow cutoff saw, like you're seeing right here, this Apple arrow cutoff saw or whatever, Weston or whatever one that is, uh, that's a very important tool to have as well. Also, because you get nice, clean cuts on your arrow shafts, okay? They're going to be a nice, clean, even-ended uh, cut. So when you put your inserts on, they will even out very nice and clean on there. So that's what you're looking for. They're going to end that shaft really nice on there. So uh, simple. You'll need some extra shafts and stuff like that probably. Um, these are what I shoot. I've been shooting them for many years. These are the traditional blems. 
Okay, these are XX or these are a 500 spine blem. Uh, the reason they work out of my bow, I've talked about it in other videos because of my long insert. Uh, but it's good to have different variations and varieties of uh, arrow shafts, things like that for Tina, for the kids, um, that kind of stuff. But uh, when I buy these, I usually buy these blems. I'll buy four or five dozen of these at a time. And uh, that's how long I've had these. Do these actually have a date on them? I'm looking on a tag to see if they do. No, they do not. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I'll buy four or five dozen at a time when I need them and then just have them and throw them there and have them ready. So, but that's basically the stuff you're going to need, um, to make your own arrows, to make your own components, to build that stuff. These are, you know, make your own bow strings. As you go, you will accumulate more and more of this stuff. And, uh, and then you will also downside some of it. You will go back and forth, but these are the things that are kind of mandatory, uh, you know, Arrow saw is a really good one. String making jig if you're going to do it. The components to do the stuff that you need to do. I will put links down below for this stuff in there for you so you have it and it's available for you. Um, and uh, But don't think you got to buy it all at once. When I started out, I was using these. Okay, I could fit everything I had for arrow making components would basically fit into a couple of these little tubs. I had two of these. Okay, and then I graduated from two of those to, I don't have it here. But it was a little yellow toolbox, uh, about the size of that tackle box back there in the back, you know, right there that had, you know, uh, some glue and some feathers. And then it grows from there and it turns into one of these bins with some of these in there. And then it resorts into, it turns into a... Uh, um, you know, to a dresser or to a cabinet or to, uh, there's people that will use multiples of these and these type things to store their stuff. There's, there's endless possibilities of how you can put all this together. Uh, this toolbox, it was here at one time. I've had this toolbox since I was like 17 years old, but at one time I had that set up with all those, uh, all my arrow making stuff in it when we were in apartment days way back then. I, uh, I would have this set up with everything in there, kept it in the bottom of the closet. So all things slow, take your time with it, build it up as you need it, but you will have to gather things. Here's my daughter's arrows. I love her arrows, but these are her arrows that he, she hunts with. Uh, she has the arrows that she killed her bear with and her deer with and all that kind of stuff. But Magnus original two blade um, these are those, uh, uh, look at those, hoo, 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 nice, old school all the way and perfect. But, uh, so those are her arrows, they 100 grain inserts in them, 100 grain adapter, uh, 125 grain Magnus two blade, uh, on there and a nice wrap on the back. And, uh, you know, this was her, this, she's shooting these out of a compound. And, uh, but incredible, it's what, like I said, she's killed most of her animals with. And, uh, it, they, you know, perfect combination for her. Put this back into here. There we go. And set. But we got her bow here now, so I'm throwing things around. But, uh, you'll need these components to start building stuff, to start making things. Uh, we haven't got into the bow fishing arrows. Uh, there's a whole other world of stuff with that kind of things we'll talk about sometime. But, a uh, few little components, a few little tools that you're going to need, some glues, some simple stuff. I will put links to all of these things down below for you to make life easier. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back with more stuff soon. Talk to you later. Bye.